Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. I'm Matt Shell, and this is Thousand Ant, where we give you devlogs, tutorials, and indie game dev advice. In this video, I wanna talk about the best ways to get into game development and talk a little bit about my own story and why I felt like that worked and maybe how you can make something similar work for you. Let's get started. All right, so a little bit of story time. So I wanted to make video games for, since I was about 15. I tried to learn C back when I was 15. I studied a little bit of C++. I tried to learn the Torque game engine at some point when that was a thing. Taught myself HTML. I really tried many, many different times to learn programming, learn game development over the years, but back in those times, there just wasn't a easy enough way for me to get started until Unity came along. And this was maybe about six years ago now that I kind of got over the first hump of being able to actually use Unity a little bit and actually make something and that was kind of the thing that allowed me to build some momentum and get going, right? I was doing that for about a year and I was working teaching at a music school, building online courses for a music school, doing a mix of teaching and video and, you know, surprise, here I am doing the same thing. And I actually saw that Unity had a job offering online for someone doing tutorial videos for their YouTube channel and they said must have uh, popular YouTube content and kind of like basic Unity knowledge or something. I was like, well, I've been using Unity for about a year. I was terrible. <laughs> but I actually did have popular YouTube tutorials about music production. If you wanna go look those up, you can look up Matt Shade Tech Logic tutorials, which is kind of entertaining. All my old music tutorials teaching people how to make beats with Logic Pro, which is what I did in my past life. I was a music producer and a DJ for, for about 15 years, and you can go find all that stuff if you want. So I had popular YouTube tutorials and basic kind of Unity knowledge, and that actually ended up being enough. I went through a whole funny hiring process, very difficult hiring process, to get hired at Unity, which I can talk about another time because it's kind of a funny story. And I was able to get hired. That was my entrance into the game development business, right? I, up until that time, I had been in the music business and this was, I got my foot in the door and I got started, right? And the thing that was amazing about that job for me was that I was getting paid to learn and teach at the same time, right? And, and I was a teacher. I had some years of teaching in the classroom at that point, teaching music production. So I knew how to go research something and then create a presentation and teach it. And I was, I was a pretty okay at it. So I was able to kind of parlay those existing skills into that first gig at Unity. Uh, and then I ended up staying there for five and a half years, working my way up to become their head of online evangelism and, and you know, and had a, a successful run there. The thing that was so valuable about that was that that was my chance to learn and learn at a professional level. And I had all these people around me that I could ask questions of. I had, in this case, I had a team of developers that I was working with to develop my content where I would be like, okay, I've wrote, written this script. Can you look at it? Is this technically correct? And they would say, no, you shouldn't say that. Or, you know, help me edit it and make it better. And, and that process of learning and learning from other people, I mean, this is a kind of a secret, but teaching is an incredible multiplier on your own learning process because not only do you have to learn something so that you can do it, but you have to learn it so that you can explain it and explain it clearly. So you have to kind of learn with a level of discipline that that you wouldn't otherwise, right? If you're just like, oh, I'll just copy the copy the code from here, paste it in, it works, okay, great, you know? Whereas if you have to teach it, you know somebody's gonna ask some question like, well, what about this? And you're like, oh, I don't know. That experience of learning, teaching, working with other people, just massively accelerated my learning kind of trajectory. And I 
also at that time was making a solo indie game project uh, called Monarch Black, which I never finished, which is a kind of a whole big story in and of itself, and I'm pretty sad about not finishing it, but it was that experience of working at Unity during the day and collaborating with a lot of other developers to, to, to get better, and then going and trying to make my game at night, which was pushing me off into all this other areas of, of learning development that I wasn't getting during my day at work, that kind of combination of those two things just gave me this kind of turbocharged five-year learning process. I don't think I would have learned as much if I had been in a university, right? I, I'm, I'm almost certain I wouldn't have. And so then when the time came last year for me to say, okay, you know what? I'm actually gonna leave. I'm gonna join Thousand Ant. I'm gonna go full time on being independent. I felt ready, right? I had a real basis of experience and contacts and experience working on games on my own, experience working with a team during the day at work, doing things like budgets and schedules and, and finance and all that stuff. And I was so much more prepared than if, for example, I had tried to just go straight from my career as a musician and teacher into being an independent game developer. Let's say I had somehow got my hands on, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars so I could have just worked for, for five years on the game by myself. I am almost positive I would not have learned the amount of stuff that I did and the game probably still would have failed because, and that is what happened, that the production of that game failed because I was learning and doing at the same time and I just didn't know anything about software architecture. I didn't really know anything about game design. I just didn't know anything about anything and I was trying to make a kind of a full-size project and it just was kind of layers of sandcastle stacked on top of each other and at a certain point I just realized, I was like, this thing is, I can't finish this, you know? It just, it kind of collapsed. And it's also connected to my personal life. That was the time that I moved to Germany. I didn't have time to, you know, there's a lot of complicated stuff there and I'm trying to take care of my kids and all this stuff, you know? So, so it's not a simple story, but that failed. And I'm really glad that that failed as a kind of a part-time side project, as opposed to I had, you know, saved up all my savings, tried to go indie, work on that thing for years by myself and then run out of money and have nothing to show for it. At least I had had this career in the meantime and learned all this stuff and learned a lot of bitter lessons from the, from the indie game dev process. My kind of advice from all of this is that it's really valuable to get that learning on somebody else's dime, right? To take that risk with somebody else's money. Spend the time learning and doing while working on somebody else's project, even if it's not your dream fantasy project, right? It was not my my dream to be making tutorial videos, right? I, I enjoy it and you see I still do it for fun, right? But it wasn't my great passion for sure. I wanted to be an indie game developer, but it gave me this basis and obviously I was able to support my family and myself through that time and got healthcare and all this stuff, you know, and, and that ended up being a, a good financial decision as well. But more importantly, I mitigated that risk of if I had just plunged in knowing nothing, it just would have been an even bigger disaster. Instead, here I am, now I'm an older person, right? Compared to a lot of people in the game dev business, I'm 41 and I did spend five and a half years of my life, you know, doing this and learning this. But now I'm at a point where like, I really know how to program. I n really know something, not everything about the, the game technical pipeline, right? Making games in Unity, specifically in Unity, right? And I also learned a bunch of business skills like budgeting and planning and financing uh, that I just, I didn't know when I was a musician, right? So being able to learn all that stuff and to get paid to do it was really of an incredible value, right? So I think this is also kind of a thing. It's like, what is your long-term goal? What is your time horizon for getting there? For me, I kind of knew, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this for a couple of years, get better and then go independent, which is which is what I've done, right? And, and I'm, and that's, that's work. There were some bitter moments and hard lessons along the way, but but really, 
it's, it's kind of worked for me. And that's why I feel comfortable to kind of share it as a piece of advice to say, look, especially if you're just coming out of school or you're just getting into the industry, take at least a couple of years to work for somebody else, even if it's not really the most exciting, amazing, perfect fantasy job, just do it and you'll learn a bunch of stuff that you can then take and apply to your own stuff. Ho hopefully this will save one person from, you know, driving themselves into a ditch. You know, let me know in the comments down below. What, does this resonate? Am I wrong for this? Did I waste my time? It, should I have just jumped in with both feet at the beginning? What do you think? What are, you, what are your plans? What are you gonna do, right? Are you trying to do this? Let me know. Drop a like on the video if you liked it. Please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.